It's uh, wonderful to see you all here. There are over 600 of you here today, uh, for over 40 countries, but you'll hear all the statistics about the different things at the end. We like to do that at the end. We have a very packed uh, opening plenary session this morning. We are very fortunate to have uh, some representatives from the uh, Spanish Ministry uh, and Government, and also, of course, our host, uh, Barcelona Supercomputing, who have really been wonderful uh, in taking on this enormous job of hosting a, a plenary. I will uh, pass the floor immediately to Mark Parsons, our Secretary General, to um, say a small welcome. You'll hear from Mark at the end again, okay? Mark. Bon dia. Bon dia. <laughs> Buenos dias. Good morning. Welcome, Ben Viguda. Uh, so here we go again. I think it's gonna be another great one. Um, <laughs> This is not the largest plenary we've had, but it's very close in terms of participation. Most importantly, I think really critically, this is um, we have a record-breaking 45 countries represented here uh, today. I think that's really cool, and I think that's uh, largely due to the work of our Spanish hosts, um, who've done a great job. I want to thank um, Mateo in particular, director of BSC, Sergi, somewhere, um, Sergi Girona. And of course, Fabrizio Gagliari, who's um, really instrumental in, in, in moving this forward. And none of it could have happened without Sara Ibanez and, and her team. Um, and also, we have to recognize this is supported by the RDA Europe, uh, RDA Europe project, um, coordinated by Peter Wittenberg. And really, the critical generosity of the European Commission, notably from Augusto Bergueno and Pilar Osson. <laughs> from DG Connect. And also, while Hillary remains plenary queen, um, Tamea, Tamea, Tamea Biro is, is rising plenary princess, I think. Um, and I'd like to note that um, Hillary Queen is now an official title within the Secretariat, and it is considered a gender neutral title. Um, I just want to uh, note a couple little logistical things that you might have missed, um, and then I will pass it to our hosts. Um, first off, uh, we have um, a, a rotation of council members. Um, John Wood and Patrick Coquet are stepping down, and Kay Razaroka's term is also at an end. So there is a new slate of um, council candidates. Um, this happens when you don't write it down, you blank on their names. Kay again, and Edith Herzog and Sandra Collins um, uh, are the slate proposed. Um, as the new council members. So that election opens today. You have the option of um, rejecting or accepting that slate. Um, and so go to the home page and check that out. I also just want to point out that we have a tradition at RDA of having a, a, a women's event. Um, and so there's a women's breakfast tomorrow. Um, so if you missed that, check that out. And then we're also trying something a little different. We're trying a number of things a little different at this plenary, like we usually do. Um, but there's an adoption support help desk, if you will, that's be available during the breaks and throughout the day, specifically around several of the recommendations that have um, come out. Um, the Scholix or the um, Publishing Data Services recommendation, um, the Data Discovery Registry Interoperability recommendation, DDRI. A brand new one just released, I think, yesterday is the BioSharing Registry, so you want to check that out. You'll hear more from them later. Um, wheat data and research data collection. So if you're interested in any of those, there's going to be a help desk with people staffing that, talking about their adoption experiences. And then so finally, I'd just like to note that we are four years old now as RDA. That's a good age to be. Um, as the parent of twins, I can tell you that the early years are difficult. Um, we talk about, in the US, we often talk about the terrible twos. In my case, it was very much the terrible threes with my children. And by the time they were, became four, they were really starting to become rational humans. Um, and maybe that's where RDA is, is we're becoming, becoming, becoming rational. Um, so seriously, though, I think we're coming of age and maturing, taking on an increasingly important role in making data work. And we need to be thinking more about what that means. We have 80 plus working in interest groups, and how, so we need to think about how they stitch together into a rational whole. And personally, I think this is a really interesting problem to have. Um, we're covering an incredibly broad gamut of concerns, in addition to the fun, esoteric stuff like metadata and persistent identifiers and registries. Um, we we're hitting all sorts of research communities, 
from drones to indigenous data sovereignty. Doesn't matter what it is, we've got a group for that. <clears throat> and this is all because of the passion of you, the volunteers, the mediators, the people that care about the data. So give yourself a hand. <laughs> but yeah, it's complex, and we're going to start trying to address some of that complexity in this meeting. Um, this is a big meeting. Um, like I said, it's, I think, our second largest. But nonetheless, we're going to pretend we're a small group, and we're like it was four years ago, and we're going to try and do a bit of a community brainstorming exercise, and you'll hear more about that later. I also just want to give a note that if you really get into this operational stuff, um, and sort of data nerdship. Um, one of our um, early career scholars, Elise Dunham, has a poster where she's looking for ideas on how we can be doing better archiving of the RDA recommendations and so forth. So that's another area you can contribute to. So with that, I'll, I'll be back in a little bit, but with that, let me turn it over to our hosts to properly open the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. So now I'd like uh, Matteo Valero to come and welcome us on behalf of Barcelona Supercomputing. Matteo is a professor in computer architecture department at UPC in Barcelona. His research interests focus on high performance architectures. He's published over 700 papers. He's been involved in the organization of over 300 international <laughs> conferences and given more than 500 invited talks. Wow. And he is, of course, the director of the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, which is the National Center of Supercomputing in Spain. Marcel. Thank you, Hilary. Thank you, Mark. I would like to welcome you on behalf of the Barcelona Supercomputing Center. I would like to welcome our bosses, so I, I need to be very, very educated, introducing uh, Professor Clara Eugenia Garcia, who is the Director General of the Ministry in Spain, dealing with uh, research, and Professor Arcadi Navarro, General Secretary of Research of the Catalan Government. Also, I would like to welcome the representative from the Commission, Augusto Burgueño, who is the Head of Unit of DigiConnect, also, Jan Claude uh, Burgelman, unit head of the DG Research and Innovation, Pilar Ocon, RDA European Union Project Officer. I would like especially thanks to uh, the organizer of uh, RDA, uh, the leadership of RDA, as uh, Fran Berman, Mark Parson, for having chosen Barcelona as host for um, uh, P9. And uh, obviously to Sergi and, uh, and Fabrizio to take care on behalf of BSC of all the work, of all the good work you are doing. And obviously to all of you who will spend with us uh, wonderful days in uh, this beautiful, beautiful city which is Barcelona. So as it was said before, I am the director of the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, it's the Sp Spanish National Lab. So we are around 500 people. Uh, the lab was uh, created in uh, 12 years ago based on a long tradition of the Technical University of Catalonia on computer architecture and parallel programming and algorithms. So one thing which is a little different to many other uh, supercomputing centers is that we have a very strong computer science department driving the way the computers are building and uh, programming it, okay? On top of that, we have three incredible uh, uh, application departments, is, uh, as the life sciences, air sciences, and engineering. So, I mean, as you can imagine, all these people from application are dealing with a huge quantity of data since many, many years ago. We have a reasonable huge databases coming from the uh, genome, the EGA, the European Genome Archive for uh, gen genomics. We had a uh, huge uh, data from coming from the climate change, for the smart cities, for the biosimulator. And this is the, the group, the, the reason why we were one of the first early adopters of the RDA recommendation. We are very happy about that. And I think we are a very strong supporter of all the activities of the RDA, okay? Um, for example, I will give you some details. BSC has been one of the first to join the RDA Organizational Assembly. 
We had been participating in all the plenary session and has been a dedicated partner in all the RDA, European Union support actions, the one to three, and now we are strongly involved in the uh, four. BSC is very honored and happy to host RDA, Plenary 9, and wish everybody a very successful and profitable conference. Don't spend the, the whole time here. Please enjoy Barcelona. <laughs> if, if you like football, I would say that provided there is some doubt if we are or not the best super competing center, I don't have any doubt we are the best in the world. But I think you don't have any doubt that the best soccer team is the Barcelona soccer team. <laughs> so today we are playing against the Sevilla. You can go to the stadium, which is very close, and enjoy this wonderful uh, city. I love Barcelona. So before I finish, I think that there is a movie of one minute, one minute and a half, I don't know, because you cannot visit, unfortunately, the place where we have the computer because we are changing the Mare Nostrum from the third to the fourth. So now we don't have iron, we have just the place where the Mare Nostrum is placed. So I don't know if uh, there is a movie. So about the place and the computer we have, it's very beautiful. Okay, so this is the Mediterranean. There is not uh, sound. I, I propose not to have sound, just to, to look the figure and to comment this is the incredible city. I have been during the last 43 years and I hope forever. So this is a small skyline with a very nice monument. Go especially to the Sagrada Familia, please. These are our patrons. This is the Barcelona Supercomputing Center and, the, and then the institution who pay the bill, the Spanish government, Clara Eugenia, the Catalan government, Arcadi, and my university. This is the building where the computer is located. It's a chapel of uh, 80 years old. And this is the computer, it's in, inside the chapel, okay? So don't have any doubt that we don't have any, I mean, the hardware and the software works perfectly. We are very well protected, okay? <laughs> so, so you have the, the chapel, it's incredible. Some movies and, uh, for example, the uh, last summer, Dan Brown, the called Da Vinci, spent eight hours with us and probably we will be in a future novel from this guy. He was, by the way, he speaks perfectly Spanish. Well, Spanish, he speaks uh, Castilian from Andalusia. It's different, okay? He spent two years in Sevilla. Very smart. We, the, 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 the movie is finishing. See, this is the racks. This was the Mare Nostrum 3. And as I say, unfortunately, you cannot visit the chapel now, but I hope many of you will come with your families after this meeting to Barcelona and uh, we will host you once more. Thank you for coming to Barcelona. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matteo. It is actually spectacular, uh, the Mare Nostrum, so for anyone who's had the fortune to see it uh, in real life. Um, our um, next speaker is from the uh, Government of Catalonia. Arcadia Navarro is the Secretary for Universities and Research. And he holds a BSc in biology and a PhD in genetics from the uh, UAB here in Barcelona. I will uh, leave the floor to you too. Uh, and if you'd want to read more about uh, him, all the bio, the long bios are on the uh, are on websites, by the way. So, thank you, Hilary. Thank you, Mark and Matteo. Well, you see, uh, as a scientist who has taking place in meeting, uh, taking part in meetings like this. I'm fully aware that that's a bad part about those meetings, that there is a toll to pay, a toll that you pay, which is listening to the politicians for a while. <laughs> now, uh, both Clara Henny and I are politicians, and, and the only good thing that I can say about ourselves is that, you know, there are several kinds of politicians, and I'm sure that you can all appreciate that some of us are less pesky than others. And I'm sure that all my American friends here will be a witness that not all politicians have the same attitude towards science. <laughs> but anyway, having been, as I say, uh, um, a, dat a data scientist until one year, two months, and 15, weeks, uh, 15 days ago, uh, when I, I was appointed, I'm really glad that this happens in Barcelona. I can see some 
friends, some colleagues, with whom I have published in the audience. And that makes me enormously happy. I, I'm really amazed out of the fact that this organization exists because, uh, you know, it has two features that make me particularly proud uh, of being a data scientist. First, the fact that this has been a bottom-up, a community-driven institution, and this is absolutely fundamental. Science has always been progressing bottom-up. Uh, there are exceptions, of course. You have moonshots, and you have Manhattan projects, and so on and so forth. And those are fundamental, don't get me wrong. But it's absolutely crucial to realize that most science is done by scientists because they want to, because they want to collaborate. And that's absolutely fundamental, and that's what we are doing here. The second feature of this meeting that makes me particularly happy is that, you know, it is not the first time in the history of humanity where people are trying to gather data to make it findable, accessible, interoperable, and recoverable. This has happened before, and it has been given a name by historians. It was called the Renas Renaissance, when all the scientists in Europe mined data from the past mine data from classical Greek authors and make sure, thanks to the invention of the printing press, that this data was made available to everyone, for everyone to understand, to, for everyone to have a better life. Of course, we are not mining data from the past. Actually, perhaps yes, we are mining data from a few years ago, or perhaps a few days ago. But we are trying to make sure that this data is findable for everyone, is accessible to everyone, so everyone can use it and recover it whenever this data is possible. And that's one of the fundamental roles of the Research Data Alliance, making that science lives a second renaissance, if you will. So on behalf of the Catalan government, whom I represent here, I will say that I'm thankful to you, not only for what you have been doing up to now, but also for what, for what you will perhaps we will, if I come back, perhaps what we all will achieve in the future for the benefit of science and for the benefit of humankind at large. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next speaker is uh, Clara uh, Eugenia yes, Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I shouldn't try the, the Spanish accent at this hour. Clara is the General Director of Research Development and Innovation Policy at the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Industry and Competitiveness. Um, so, Clara, I would like to hand the floor to you. Thank you. Thank you, Hilary. Good morning to everybody. So, uh, I'm very pleased to be here, and I really thank the organizers, the organizing committee, and especially the Barcelona Supercomputing Center for providing this wonderful setting. Uh, before I will start with a few ideas, uh, I will just disagree with Arkady. I'm sorry, I'm not a politician. I don't think we are politicians. Uh, I will say that we are policymakers, which is something which is, is totally different. Uh, and also, we are researchers, and uh, we share the passion for science with all of you. Uh, and I think that's why we are uh, here. Uh, this is an institutional talk to welcome you and, and be sure that uh, I hope you will have a very nice uh, stay in Barcelona. And uh, I welcome you in the name of the government of, of Spain and uh, in the uh, name uh, and for the sake of science uh, and to progress in science. What I would like just to say is a few words uh, about something that is very obvious to all of you and is about the impact of digitalization in science and how this impact this uh, what we call the digital science br bring us uh, here uh, or, and, and how this digital impact also is shaping our policies the our policy making 
in science and innovation. I think that at least there are four main transformations uh, related to the digital science. First is the way we produce knowledge. Second is how we diffuse uh, 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 scientific knowledge. Third is uh, the value. Uh, it has also influenced the value of research and research data. And the last one is the necessity that we have to consider digital skills uh, and uh, uh, data management as part of our training as researchers. So more broadly, there are really a few areas of research and the research enterprise that remain untouched uh, by digitalization. And this is something extremely important for us. Mm. Uh, this digital, uh, the digital, uh, uh, the new digital world of science uh, has a large potential to bring uh, new benefits for the scientific community, private stakeholders, funders, governments, uh, and society in general. But what I uh, have the feeling is that this change, this transformation is disruptive. Uh, is uh, going to change the way we understand our job, the way our scientific communities had been organized for centuries now, the way our organizations and our centers are also uh, uh, designed and organized. That's a threat, that's a challenge, because what we are doing here, you are doing here, uh, when you started just to work on, on research data and so on, is just to challenge the status quo. Mm? The status quo that is, uh, 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 has been uh, 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 brilliant science uh, for decades. The status quo of researchers, the promotion of researchers, the status quo of academic institutions, the status quo of academic libraries, uh, of the relationship with uh, uh, business, uh, and how new individuals and researchers adapt to this new reality. Uh, I will uh, try just to finish here. Uh, by saying that the Spanish government, as far as we can and as far as we are concerned with policy making, we are supporters and fans, fans of, of a, a, this open science movement, including uh, data manage, uh, management and open research data. We think that open science is the future and that it's in our hands uh, to create that future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Clara. Um, also, Clara yesterday uh, was here with us because um, many of you may not know, but they, we had the first meeting of Ordea Iberia yesterday, so the uh, Spanish uh, Ordea community and the Portuguese uh, Ordea community, and I think some of the Latin Americans uh, have decided to come together and find common points, so that's quite exciting. And in Europe, we have a lot of these different national level um, activities and we're very grateful for you for coming and supporting that uh, along with Eva and BSC who organized it for us. So I'd like to thank you all for coming very much for opening this uh, two and a half days of uh, excitement that we've already had two days previously. Um, I will let you go back to your policy making <laughs> jobs. <laughs> okay and thank you and thank you once again so thank you very much.